So we saw last time that the fallbacks for CSS variables are kind of awkward, but we can fix that. We can make it much easier. We're going to be doing that in this video. It's a little bit more complicated. So if you've never used SAS, this might be a little bit over your head, uh, but this is just going to make our lives so much easier. It's going to automatically make fallbacks for us. It takes a little bit of setup, but once the setup's done, it, it goes super well. So yeah, let's go and see how I do that. So to get started on all of this, I actually want to get rid of this. Um, so I'm going to leave my root, uh, sort of, but we're actually, for now, we're going to switch root here to uh, vars. So these are my variables, and I'm going to take off these things here um, because I don't want them. And this is going to be a SAS map, so actually this should be changed to a... Uh, regular parentheses and these all have to be comma separated instead of um, hyphen separated and my semicolon goes at the end. So a SAS map looks like this. Um, it's just a map of all of my different stuff that's in here. So pretty much I'm going, okay, my variables, I have a yellow variable, this is what my yellow variable is. I have a black one that has this light blue, so you, can, you know, it's not that complicated I think. Um, and the reason we want to write it out like this is because I want to be able uh, to easily use it um, in, uh, I want to be able to use my fallbacks. So I could do it and actually have it like this, but then it's not going to work as a fallback. So we're going to leave it just like this for now. Oh, and here I have an error because I forgot to uh, put like that. So there's my SAS map. You can see it broke the whole thing now, which is normal. Um, so there's my SAS map. Sorry about that. Forgot that part of it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to recreate our root. So root, uh, no, it's not a variable, root. Uh, so we're going to recreate our root. And alrighty, so for my root, um, this is where we're going to use a function. And basically what I'm doing is, and this is where it might seem a little bit redundant, but it's the first step we need to be able to get this to work. So um, and having my root set up like this, or I'm going to use my function, and what it's going to do is it's going to take all of these and turn them into CSS variables. You might be going, well, I already had them. Trust me on this, okay? So uh, to be able to do this, if you've never used a SAS function, uh, I'm going to be doing an each function. So if you know JavaScript at all, this is sort of like a for each. So for each variable, uh, whoops, let's not do variable, let's say uh, for each property and value pair. So for each property and value which is in vars. So it's going to look inside of my vars here. It's going to grab the property and the value. These names I'm inventing. They could be anything you want. You could have this as var name and var property if you want, or var value, or whatever you want. Um, there's no, you know, it's whatever makes sense to you. So I'm just saying for each property and value inside of here, I want to do something. So open up my braces. And I'm going to have it do create a variable. So this is, um, I have to use something called interpolation here. So um, what this is doing here is I want my two lines. So we know already if I'm making a CSS variable, I want like blue, let's just say is the name of my variable, but I need to automatically make all of these. So I could just write property here, but it's not going to work the way you'd expect it to. Um, so what we want it to do is we're going for each property, I want to print out the name of the property. So to actually have it print out the name, we have to write it out like this. So this is interpolation in SAS. So it's taking whatever is actually here and it's going to print it. And so it's going to make yellow. It's going to write out yellow. So it's going to do two hyphens, then the word yellow, and then it's going to put a semicolon, a space, and then we want it to grab this. So for that, I just have to do another one. So, and I can write value. And you can see all of a sudden it comes back to life. So what this is doing is, uh, let's go and take a look. View compiled CSS. And it's pretty much put it back to what we had, exactly what we had before. So at this point you're going, well, this is silly. And it is a little bit more setup, I won't lie, but it makes it so much easier to build in fallbacks. So let's go back here and go back to view uncompiled CSS. So we have this nice little map, and then we're taking that map and turning them into normal properties here, uh, or our normal variables that we just like we'd had set up before. So now what I want to do is I also want to come in and create a mixin. So I'm going to create a mixin 
called a var. And we're going to have two things in here. We want to have a property. Um, in this case, I'm going to call it variable, I guess, variable. So the idea here is I'm going to write out a property. So I'm going to write something like height, or well, not height, let's say a background color. So I'm going to write background, and then I'm going to write the variable that I want. So I want my black variable. So to get this to work, we need to use a little bit of the interpolation thing again. So I'm going to write it out. I'm going to do one that's going to be kind of useless to start with. But So we're going to do our prop property. And then we're going to write var. And we're going to write in. Uh, and then I want my variable to be here. So basically what this means is I write in the property I want, so say background color, and I write the variable I want, so let's say I write yellow, and it's going to set it all up. So let's just go and take a look. So I'm going to just go on here and make a body, and let's say my, I'm going to do an at include var. So I'm going to say my background should be yellow. So let's go and see what this did. We can view compiled CSS. And so it's taken background. And it's setting it to my var yellow, which would be my yellow right there. So, so far so good, except I don't have a fallback yet. I want to make sure that I also have a fallback because by itself, this is kind of useless. We could just write it out like that from the beginning and everything we've done is a complete waste of time. So before that, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing, sort of. So we're going to keep our uh, property. But now instead of spitting out the variable like this, what I want to do, um, so the reason this is working is because this is spitting out an actual variable of yellow. So it's taking the name yellow. And if we look at the view compiled CSS, um, it's writing out the yellow like this. So it's just re referencing what I have here. We can't do that for the fallback. We have to do things for the fallback a little bit differently. Because say I put uh, pink here, Whoops, not there, sorry. Uh, here, if I just write pink, view compiled CSS, it's, oh, we can't do it. Uh, well, let's just remove that. Uh, view compiled CSS, and now it's just looking for a variable pink, which doesn't even exist, right? So that's a problem. Um, I mean, you know what, I'm doing that, all this with a background. I should do it with a color, uh, just so we can actually see it. So the color pink's not going to work, but let's just switch that over to yellow. And we can see it's actually changing everything to yellow. Or we can do light blue. There you go. So my body's set to light blue. So we can see that it's actually working. Um, but what I want to do is I want to create a fallback for this. So the fallback's a bit more complicated, but it starts the same. So as I was looking at, we start with our uh, property. Um, but where it's different is, because here all I'm doing is taking whatever I write here and adding two hyphens in front of it. So it's doing var, and it's just, it's working. I don't have to worry about it too much. For this one, I have to do it a little bit differently. We have to go into our map. So I'm going to say map get, which lets me jump into my map. And this is why we created the map. The whole reason we created the map here is so we can have a fallback to go to. So we're going to do our map get. So the map that I want to get from is called vars. And what I want to get is the variable, variable. So it's going to go and find light blue from here. So when I do my add include color light blue, it's going to go and grab that light blue from here. And it's going to do two things with it. It's going to do it the way we were doing it, but it's also going to set it up another way, which creates our fallback. So you can see it's doing the fallback version. And here it's using the variable version. So it puts both of them together. So if I were to refactor my code a little bit, so we can get rid of this because we don't need that one. Um, so here, do, 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 here my color is light blue for the background. So instead of writing it like that, I do it at include var. I want to have the color. So this is the property that I'm changing, and I'm changing it to light blue. And it's working. And just to make sure that it is working, let's try doing yellow. Of course, it's not working. Why not? Oh, I forgot my semicolon. That would do it. And there we go. We can see that it's working. And if I change that to BLK for my black, it should switch over to black. 
So it is working great. So let's put that back to light blue. Uh, where else do we have? We have our background yellow here. So for that one, I would do at, at include var and I change my background to yellow. And just to double check that it's working again, let's change it to black. It's working, so I'll change it back to yellow to keep it looking good. And now I can come down and for my font weights, it'll work the same. So at include var, uh, I want to change my font weight. And I believe that was font weight normal. Awesome, awesome. And last but not least, at include var font weight, font weight medium. And there we go. And just for fun, let's change that over to bold and light uh, normal and medium so we can see that it's working wonderfully and if i look at the view compiled css i can see that i have my fallbacks uh, anywhere i've used it so i have my color my fallback and then i have my variable my fallback and then my variable now you might be going this is a lot of work it is uh it takes a little bit of extra setup to actually get working but in the end it's definitely worth it i promise you and in the next video where we start looking at how we can use javascript to play around with stuff um, you can really see how uh, it take you know you're taking a big advantage of something but again it's for me just having everything grouped up here where i can control the whole style of my site just through one grouping of stuff that's all the way at the top is just amazing and the fact that i can use variables and it doesn't you know i'm sort of using sass here but i'm sort of not using sass we're using sass in a way to make it work to have our fallbacks but i can still leverage the power of the css variables um which uh, are you know it, it's nice that it's as we see in the next video we're going to see uh, that we can explore it in other ways as well so that was a fun one. I hope you learned something with this video. If you have any questions about all this stuff, if something was new in there, uh, let me know. Leave a comment down below and ask away. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed and you like this video, consider subscribing because it's new videos like this every single week. And in the next video, we're of course exploring how JavaScript can work with variables and it should be a, a good amount of fun. I think it's cool. I think the, the JavaScript and variables they're made for each other. It's really cool how we can easily and dynamically change stuff on a page. So looking forward to seeing you then. And until then, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.